Hey guys, Cliff Gray here with Flat Tops Wilderness Guides and True Hunts. Today I'm going to address a question I get a lot, and that's how to get started hunting, okay? And specifically, what hunts to go on. This, is, this actually doesn't need to be a complicated question. I think people make it more uh, frustrating to themselves than it needs to be. The reality is, in order to get into hunting, you need to just go hunting, okay? And so what I'm going to go over in this video is some really simple hunts that are available to you, um, particularly out west, in the Midwest, where you can go out and actually start the process of hunting. If you, if you read a lot of the articles I've written, I've got a, a multiple part series on the True Hunts website that's kind of directed directly towards people that are trying to get into hunting, particularly people that are maybe in their 30 or 30s or 40s, late 20s. They didn't have a father or mother that hunted, so they're kind of going at it on their own. They don't have a lot of guidance. That article is direct, those are, that set of articles is directed towards them. And you'll see one of the things that I emphasize is that gear and all the other things that surround hunting, those are, those are non-essential in the beginning, okay? There's obviously a few items you need to have to just be proficient, be able to process game and, and those sort of things. But those are way overemphasized versus actually just going hunting, okay? So this video is going to focus on some hunts that within, you know, a, a, let's assume that you're going to start, you know, sometime here in the next couple months, you're going to plan for the next year, right? As long as you're doing that planning, you know, around the holidays, of the previous year so like if it's 2020 right now if by christmas i'm doing some planning you know by january i've got it kind of solidified i can put in for some tags and what i'm going to tell you is that as a brand new hunter i know that i can set up a strategy for for the brand new hunter that in 2021 they can draw somewhere between four to six hunts right and those hunts are going to be you know, for, for good, what I call meat or management animals, okay? But they're gonna be great opportunities for the new hunter because they're gonna be very high success, all right? And they're gonna be very accessible with minimal equipment, okay? So I'm gonna go through some hunts that I would suggest and they're hunts that you can apply for. Getting five or six hunts in on your first year of hunting, that's how you're gonna jump up the learning curve really quickly. Don't get caught up in all the, all the, you know, the, the more trophy oriented hunts. I mean, I love those. There's a challenge to them. They're fantastic. But as a new hunter, just do some of these more meat hunts and get into the, the game, okay? There's a few hunts you should for sure apply for, okay? One, Wyoming antelope. That's a slam dunk type of deal. You don't have to have points. You can get doe hunt opportunities very easily, and it's a great hunt for a new hunter. Number two is Colorado cow elk, okay? Again, a resident or non-resident, you can get a pretty decent cow elk, a cow elk tag in Colorado, even to this day, that's gonna give you a really good opportunity. And of course, elk is a great meat animal and it's a great animal for you to learn kind of the western slash mountain hunting experience on, all right? The other one is Colorado mule deer. And you could trade this off with Wyoming mule deer or some, some other state where, you know, Montana, Wyoming, or Colorado where mule deer tags are available. Again, a great species to learn on, all right? Those are gonna be your core hunts in my mind as a new hunter. In addition to, usually a deer hunt in your home state, all right? All the states in the U.S., maybe with the exception of a few states that are very limited in terms of public access, but the majority of other states like, you know, Texas and California, they're going to be hard for you to pull off as a resident. Um, you can do it. There's, there's some public land opportunities in Texas to kill whitetail and in California to kill blacktail, but they're somewhat limited, okay? They're not like if you're a Nebraska resident where, you know, going out and getting a couple of whitetail is a, is a slam dunk, okay? There's tons of opportunity. But for everybody else, the fourth hunt that you should, you know, build in there is going to be more, you know, your home resident deer hunt, okay? And I'm not going to cover that here. You can look at that. It's going to be, you know, a, 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 a low, low cost type of hunt for you, so build that in. But the three other ones I think are, you know, are ones you should all focus on. Wyoming antelope, Colorado cow elk, and then a mule deer hunt in Wyoming, um, uh, Colorado, or uh, Montana. All right, so 
that's your core set of hunts. You can add in Nebraska whitetail doe hunts, or you can add in a September uh, bear hunt in Colorado, or a spring hunt in, say, a state like Idaho for bears, okay? So right there, those are all hunts that in my mind, if you do a little research, you, you, you know, do a little research and do a little online scouting beforehand, try to get a little help from, from folks in the, in the region, all those hunts are going to have 70 to 80 percent success rate for you, good access on public land, tags you can draw, and the cost of each one of those hunts is, you know, all in, you can easily do for between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars a piece okay so what i just laid out there for you is you can go on you know three to five hunts and you're going to have your total cost including housing fuel all that is probably going to fall in there between seven to eight thousand dollars okay that's a great way to start on your own in hunting and you're going to learn an astronomical amount uh, during that process so let's start with wyoming antelope okay all right, so on Wyoming antelope, as a new hunter, you might as well focus on doe tags, okay? You can draw two of them, actually, and so you can, make, you can make the hunt about harvesting those two animals and then working through the process, okay? So on that hunt, let's go to the statistics for Wyoming for 2019. You can see here in several spots, if you apply for those doe tags as first choice, your odds of drawing are very high. In a lot of cases, you're talking, you know, 70 to 90 percent to, you know, close to 100 percent draw opportunity for doe tags in Wyoming for antelope. Okay, and that's an easy hunt, guys. Put in for it. Get the two doe tags. You can go to Wyoming, get a mapping uh, system like Onyx or or the equivalent. And have that on your phone and you'll see that in in many of these units you're going to have access to a lot of public land a lot of them are just driving down the highway you see on your onyx that's blm you have legal access to it from the highway just pull off on a two track you know as long as you have a you know a four-wheel drive vehicle or whatever you won't have a problem and you're going to find doe antelope relatively quickly okay so that's your first your first hunt the second hunt we're going to talk about is colorado cow elk all right so because you're a new hunter, you, ha you don't have what's called preference points. You're not, you're not working on, you know, in five, six years, drawing a, uh, you know, a, a trophy class bull unit or something like that. So my suggestion to you is as you're getting into hunting, right now there's a great opportunity for you to apply as a first choice in Colorado for, for, for a cow elk tag, okay? And there's lots of good opportunities, lots of good public land you can hunt them on. The one thing to keep in mind is usually this is going to be a cold weather weather hunt. So you have to, you, that's the one probably negative for a new hunter is your, is your better cow elk tags that you're going to draw, you know, your higher success uh, rate hunts. You have to be willing to bear uh, inclement weather and you have to be able to have a vehicle where you can get around public land where there's potential for snow, okay? So keep that in mind, but we'll go to the draw stats. These are for 2000. Um, 20 actually and you can see here several units have have cow tags that are going to be good opportunities for you and you're going to have you know 70 to 100 percent chance of drying that tag and the great thing about cow elk for you new hunters is once you harvest one I mean it's a pile of good meat and if that's one of the reasons you're getting into this you can learn you can jump a lot of that learning curve related to you know, game processing, handling meat and stuff with cow elk, and there's a good reward at the end, all right? I'll admit, like, the antelope hunts are going to be, you know, they're going to get you some shooting opportunities, they're going to get you into glassing, but antelope are relatively small, particularly does, so you're going to go through the work, right, of, of field dressing that meat and dealing with it, but the rewards are not going to be like what they are out of a cow elk hunt in terms of actually filling, filling your freezer, all right? So that's your, that's your cow elk hunt opportunity in Colorado. You can trade, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but you can actually trade that for a Wyoming cow elk opportunity. And same deal, you can go to their odds here. And there's a bunch of areas in Wyoming. In Wyoming, you have to be a little careful because a lot of the big cow quota areas are going to have a lot of private land. But if you do a little due diligence, you call the game wardens in those areas, what you'll find is that Wyoming 
much, much more so than Colorado. A lot of the private landowners will give you access to shoot a cow elk. You know, a lot of them will do it for free. Some of them will do it for a couple hundred bucks. So you can still keep that opportunity, even with your state tag cost, your fuel, you know, obviously depending where you're located in the states, you can still keep that, that hunt down, you know, to $1,500 or less. All right, so the next one we'll talk about is going to go a little bit outside of the very, very high success rate hunts I just mentioned, the doe antelope and the cow elk hunts. And it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but it's a great learning curve hunt. And that's Wyoming uh, deer or Colo Colorado mule deer, okay? So Wyoming mule deer or Colorado mule deer. There are, ton, there are a ton of units in Colorado where you can draw a buck tag D during the first year you don't have to put in multiple years you'll draw that buck tag and you want to focus on units that aren't necessarily known as like like huge trophy units because at this point you really shouldn't care about that right you always have the odd chance that you, you kill a big deer in a, in a unit but you might as well focus on units where the op the density of deer is high you know the later season hunts where they're on the they're they're moved in the winter range or starting to rut a little bit and go out there here in this hunt you're really going to get more of the mountain experience right the late season cow elk hunts you're really going to be snow hunting it's kind of after all the other seasons are over but these deer hunts are going to put you where you're actually probably hunting some sagebrush some aspen transition but you still don't have to have a bunch of specialized equipment all right a lot of these are going to be road access where you can do some glassing from the road you know you can hike in you know a mile off the road and do some glassing and you can harvest a decent decent animal and uh and go from there there's so there's a bunch of d buck tag uh, opportunities and that's what i suggest even as a new hunter at this point you know you've done you might have already got your doe antelope uh, hunt done. You've got, you've got a little experience there. You might as well just go for the buck tag and, and do that. I think you're going to get a little bit more out of that than if you do the mule deer doe hunts, which again, a bunch of those are available in Colorado too. But some of those I think are going to be maybe even a little too accessible for a new hunter that wants to learn a lot, okay? A lot of times in some of these areas, if you draw one of the doe tags as the first choice, first choice applicant, you can just drive into the BLM and shoot the first mule deer right off the road. It doesn't, it, it's, you're not gonna learn a ton. So you might as well get a buck tag, do a little hunting. Your success rate, if you're not picky about bucks, in a lot of these units is still gonna be probably 60 to 90 percent all right so you can get a lot out of that hunt okay so the next hunt you can add into the mix it's going to stay below that fifteen hundred dollar mark um, for the actual hunt is going to be a Col colorado september bear hunt or a spring bear hunt in one of the states that allows it like idaho okay this hunt's going to be more challenging than the hunts the hunts i mentioned but it's also going to be different style stylistically right okay so a september bear hunt a spot and stock bear hunt that you do in um in colorado you can do that as a new hunter but you need to do your research learn the, the food sources on bears and you're going to have to learn a little bit about their biology and it's for the most part going to be a very glassing intensive hunt on habitat that you think is likely to produce bears okay probably what you're looking at there in terms of success rate is probably if you're really dedicated for let's say four to six days during that hunt as a new hunter, you're probably going to be looking at a 40 to 50% success rate, okay? But it's a nice one to add in the mix because it's inexpensive, lots of opportunity in the western states for it right now, and it's a new species, okay? It gives you a, a different angle in terms of your, your exposure to hunting, all right? They're going to be a little bit different than hunting mule deer and elk and antelope, okay? So the last one I'll talk about is, that, is there are some great opportunities in Nebraska for doe hunts, okay? For doe whitetail hunts. You can look at those. They keep the tags very reasonable for, for people. They're, in many areas, they're encouraging um, doe harvest. And get on the Nebraska Fish and Game website. There are, there's not a lot of public land in Nebraska, but they have some special state areas where they're allowing doe hunts, and that's another great opportunity. Whitetail are going to be great table fare. And again, you don't have to have a bunch of specialized uh, equipment. You don't have to be super, super advanced in terms of your, you know, your, your, your woodsmanship and, and hunting abilities, okay? You can go out there, get some opportunities, and jump up the learning curve in terms of hunting. All right, guys, so I just went over a bunch of hunts there that, you know, go ahead, do your own research on them. 
But what my suggestion is if you're going to get into this sport, get into some of these hunts that are high success, but you can learn a lot from them, okay? And you can get the tags that are available. And there's a lot of access on public land, all right? So, you know, four to six hunts, plan on spending it between six to seven thousand dollars, let's say six to eight thousand dollars um, on on that total hunts. You're probably gonna need to, you know, schedule out 15 to 25 days um, off to, to execute those hunts. So you might have to factor that in, you might have to just do uh, you know, three hunts a year or whatever. But that gives you a good model of what to look for when you're looking for your first hunts out there. I hope it helps you guys. Good luck.